Ever since Windows 11 came out, I've been pretty persistent in telling people that it's not worth upgrading to. But, if you watched my video last week, you may have noticed that I upgraded my main computer to Windows 11. Now, the major reason for this is I actually upgraded my CPU and motherboard last week. I changed from a 3900X to the 5950X um, and an entirely new Asus motherboard. And with that, I did a fresh install of Windows. I'll typically do this every one or two years anyways. I'll start Windows off entirely fresh, helps clean up any kind of issues that have kind of piled up over time. Um, and it really helps speed up the system and kind of get rid of a little bit of the bugginess that can happen sometimes over time. But that doesn't really answer why I decided to do Windows 11 instead of continuing with Windows 10. So let's talk about why. Now, my first major reason is when I'm doing walkthroughs or guides on videos, a lot of people now who are getting new computers who use my videos to learn things are doing so on Windows 11. So this is a lot easier for them to understand the interface and where I'm going. Second reason is I wanted to have kind of a new computer feeling and experience and switching over operating systems really helps with that. So that was another big one. And the final major reason that I decided to switch to Windows 11 is that there are a lot of great new features available in Windows 11 that I've been itching to try. And although I do get some of them on my laptop, which runs Windows 11, it came with Windows 11, it does not have the 2H22 update, which I got on my desktop, which has some of these features baked in. So one of the big features I was really excited to try was running Android apps on Windows. You can use virtualization on your computer to run basically an Android subsystem within Windows and it allows you to use apps. So this is a really cool way for me to possibly look into using when doing walkthroughs with apps instead of recording things onto my phone. It's a lot more difficult that way and this might be a little bit easier. And it's just another fun thing to play around with. Speaking of subsystems, having the ability to install a Linux subsystem is also really awesome. I've been really enjoying playing around with Linux now that I have my Steam Deck. I've used Linux in the past a little bit. I've used Mint and stuff like that um, as backups. I use it when copying large files and I tinker with it just a little bit. But now I have access to that directly on my desktop without having to fully commit to using Linux and I really enjoy it. Snap layouts have been an awesome upgrade. I used to use Fancy Zones a lot in Windows 10 and the fact that they kind of implemented their own version of Fancy Zones in Windows 11 and you can still use Fancy Zones in Windows 11 if you want to, Snap layouts have been awesome. Also, the improvements to virtual desktops has been absolutely incredible. I use virtual desktops a lot. Um, especially now that I'm recording a lot of videos when I record my desktop. So using them is really awesome and the improvements that they've made to them and just the visual experience of navigating between them has been great. And then two slightly smaller but important to me and really fun things about Windows 11 is one, obviously it's a new look. Um, I really enjoy the way that Windows 11 looks. It looks nice and modern. It looks fresh. Um, it's, a, it's a very appealing looking OS and they brought back the login sound which very small thing but i absolutely love it also super small but they finally added a dark mode to the notepad which has been a long time coming um, and if you're using notepad i use notepad plus plus as well but i use notepad for really simple stuff because it's just quicker to launch and i don't have to worry about all those tabs so having dark mode is really nice now I mentioned that there are a few features in the 2H22 update that are not available otherwise that I was really looking forward to. So let's talk about some of those. The first one is start menu folders. Um, the start menu going from Windows 10 to Windows 11, I felt was a pretty big step back. Not being able to group apps on your pins um, and having the recommended really kind of forced on you. But having the folders kind of brings back the idea of groups without having them within a barred format like they were on Windows 10. And this really helps me kind of put a bunch of stuff into my start menu without having to have it be overly cluttered and it just kind of helps me keep things organized, which I really enjoy. Another absolutely massive feature for me that I use a ton. I've only been using the, tw the 2H22 update for about a week, but I use this thing constantly all day, every day, and that is the tabbed explorer. It's kind of crazy that it took this long to get a tabbed explorer in Windows, but having it makes such a big difference. As you can tell, I have a lot of drives here, so I'm hopping between drives all the time, hopping between folders all over the place, and this really, really helps me keep everything organized without having a whole bunch 
of Explore tabs open. And one of the final new features of the 2H22 update that I really enjoy is the new updated task manager. Now, its overall effectiveness and actual feature set isn't very different from what was on Windows 10. There are some new um, you know, quality of life improvements like heat mapping within the processes, the new rounded corners to kind of fit the rest of the ecosystem, um, and just having a little bit new, a better visual. Things work really, really well. They've done a, a few little small tweaks like how the app history looks compared to what was on Windows 10. Um, you're able to see all the users that are logged in, which is really uh, interesting and awesome. Um, the startup apps window is a little bit different than it used to be. And, you know, services looks a little bit different, but overall it still functions the same. I'm just really enjoying how they've tweaked the look to kind of match everything else. Because before it seemed like one of those apps where they still had the old design and they did, um, and it just didn't really fit in. So this really feels like it's a Windows 11 product. Now that's not to say that Windows 11 has been a perfect upgrade for me. Um, and you know, there are a lot of pain points, but fortunately two of the tools that I've mentioned previously, both O&O Shut Up 10, which works for Windows 11 as well. And also this is Win 11, which is now kind of uh, bulked in to the Dblow OS. Uh, I think that's how you pronounce it. Uh, software little program really allows you to get rid of a bunch of that telemetry that's going on in the background of Windows minimize the amount of like ads and pushing stuff that goes on in windows and also brings back a few core features that were available in windows 10 like the expanded context menu um, that a lot of people were really missing now to finish off this video is it really worth upgrading to windows 11 and my answer still stays kind of the way it was before if you're currently using windows 10 and you're only planning on just upgrading your current windows 10 to windows 11 I still don't think it's something that you need to do. If you want to do it, you're more than welcome to. And I think Windows 11 is at a much better place now, especially if you do get the 2H22 update than it was before. But I don't think it's entirely necessary for people to upgrade to and they don't have to feel like they need to. So that's something that's super important. But if you are looking to do an entire computer refresh and reinstall your OS from scratch, start everything off from scratch, if you want to try Windows 11, it's a good time to do it. Also, Windows now no longer sells Windows 10 licenses through their website. You can still probably get physical copies at stores, but once those run out, there's not going to be any of those anymore either. So, you know, when building a new computer, it may be a better bet to just go with Windows 11. But again, you can choose which way you want to go. Also, if you do decide to upgrade your current Windows 10 to Windows 11 without doing a fresh install, I believe you do have a 10 day window to revert it back if you don't like it. So if you do want, you can go ahead and give it a try. So yeah, these have been my thoughts and feelings about upgrading to Windows 11 from Windows 10 as my main computer um, and doing that for the last week. Now, if you want me to do any more videos that kind of focus on Windows 11 now that I'm using it on the daily, um, or you want me to do any videos that kind of focus around things to utilize within Windows 11, please let me know down in the comment section below. But I really hope that this video helped you out. If it did, I'd appreciate it if you liked, subscribed. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or feedback, you can leave those down in the comment section below. Big thanks to my Patreon sponsors, Thought Slime and Step Back, and thank you for watching the end of this video. If you want to see any of my other computer videos, including the hotkey video that I did that includes a bunch of stuff for Windows 11, you can go ahead and check that out right up here. And as always, stay safe out there. I'll see you next Saturday.